Now, what we can do is that pick any of these columns. So that's, let me zoom in a bit, okay. So we can actually pick any of these columns, right? If for instance, we can pick say type one and then make inferences from that, right? We can pick say type two and then make inferences from that, right? You can pick say um, defense and then make inferences from that. So either of these um, is called a univariate visualization, right? So we can actually do that. It's part of the exploratory data analysis. So whatever we've been doing here is part of exploratory data analysis, okay? That's, that's that we've been doing. So over here, what I'm going to do is to use this um, dist plot and let me show you what this plot will actually give us. All right, let me show you what it's actually going to give us. So this plot will actually give you this, right? It will actually give you this um, this histogram and then this smooth line that you can see here, which is flattened by the kernel density estimate, right? So it's actually going to give you that one, which is very smooth here, which is actually going to help you to see the distribution of your data, right? It's actually going to um, help you to see the distribution of your data. Okay, later on, I'll actually introduce you to this kernel density est estimate. We'll talk about that, okay? And I'll also give you some links that if you want to read more about this um, KDE, right? You can actually um, read about that, all right? So what is, that's what um, this plot will actually help us to do, to be able to plot um, together at the same time using histogram and then also um, the kernel density est estimate to see the distribution of, of, of a particular column, right? So in this case, we are doing that for the defense column, right? We are doing that for the defense column. So we have S and S, which is the C bone, and I'm using the dist plot function. And then inside that, I'm passing this uh, our data one, which in in our data one, I'm going into the column of defense, right? And then I plot that. So only the column of defense is what I'm plotting over here. Okay, now. Let me show you this alongside, right? So the distribution of um, of any data point can be can be interpreted using this, right? So if this if it is smooth like this with all the mean and the median and the mode just centered here, then you can call it as a normal distribution, right? Which which is a symmetrical di distribution, right? Some people also call it Gaussian, which is the same thing, right? Um, you can you can actually if it is actually um in a smooth shape without um, being shifted to any any part like this, then you can call it a normal distribution, right? Symmetric, I mean symmetrical distribution, okay? However, you might have a situation, like if you see what we have here, right? It's a bit shifted to, to, to the left, right? It's a bit shifted to the left here. So we can compare that to this, right? Which is a positive skewed. In that case, we have the, the median, right, being, being here, and then the mode, and then the being like that. They are not centered at the, a particular center point like this, right? We have it in this way. You can see that most of the data points will be um, very small, where a very few of them will be very high, right? Unlike this one, where most of the data points will be high, whilst a very few of them will be very low, right? So if, if you see it in this shape, right, then you can see that it's negative, skewed and if you see it in this way you can see that it's positive skewed we are going to talk about skewness and distributions in the statistics class we're going to go into detail so of for that so we don't need to worry about that when we get there we're actually going to go into details but i just want to show you so that when you plot um if when you use the dist plot like this you know what is actually telling you right the distribution of the data point right and and maybe um that data that particular column see in our case say defense is having um, some null values, right? And you want to replace it. How are you going to replace that? You can replace, you can either drop it, but that's a bad idea. You can replace it with some of the values, maybe the mean or the median or the mode of the column. But in order to choose the mean or the median or the mode, the distribution of that particular column is going to be very helpful, okay, in choosing that. And we're going to talk about that, I mean, in our subsequent, um, lessons we're going to be talking about that okay now this is this is basically to give you an idea of how i mean the various distributions that you can actually have okay so in this case you might maybe um associate with this to um positively skewed right right i mean it's almost almost symmetry but it's not that symmetry you can switch to this to a positive um skewed right where most of the data are less right so that is between zero and then um hundred where we have only few to be high right that's somewhere around 150 to say 200 right 
So most of the data will be very small here, but very few will be high. Whereas if it is a negative skewed, most of the data would have been um, high in our case, right? If it's a bit shift to this point, right? Then most of the data would have been, um, let me bring this pen and show you what I mean, right? If it was something like this, right? Then we could have said that most of the data points are between these parts, right? Most of the data points are between this part. Okay, which is high, right? That will be a negative skewed, right? That will be negatively skewed, right? But in this case, we have this where most of the data points are between this, right? Most of the data points are here, which is low, right? So we can associate it to that. Okay, so this is, this, I mean, um, I mean the dist plot is what is actually going to give you that capability to actually do that, okay? So you can see that's still just a single line of code. But if this one was, um, we, we're just using the, the math problem, then it's going to be a lot of code to actually do, okay? Now, we can also use a box plot to actually see this, the same thing, right? We can use the box plot to actually still see the same thing, right? In this case, we are still doing it for, for, for the defense column, okay? We are still doing it for the defense column and it's just, just a single column that we are talking about and it's still just a single line of code you can see that okay now you see how it is shifted here how it's shifted to the left right so you can see that most of the data points right this is the minimum of the risk card this is the maximum of the risk card with some um some outliers in here okay so most of them are in between zero and then um 125 right and with some a little bit of them are uh, lying outside here okay so now let's see, um, I've given you some links here that you want to read more about this um, KDE and other, other concepts you can actually use and then um, make good use of it, okay? Now, um, over here, I can actually specify this KDE. You know that I sp when I plotted this, right, with this plot, um, I did not pass in, I did not specify any KDE here. Right, I did not specify. Um, I did not specify anything here. Right, I just, I just did that. So, um, by default, it's actually going to give me this. It's going to give me this KD. I can turn that one off. Right, I can turn it off using KD equals false. Right, I can do that. So if I do that, you see that now I don't have that smooth curve over there. Right, I can turn it off or I can turn it on. Right, I can turn it off and on. All right, so all the, all the, depending on the particular project that you're working on and depending on your choice and what you want to get, what kind of information you want to gain, right, you can be using that, okay? Now, let's see what we are doing here. We can actually plot only that the KD, right? We can only plot the KD. So this smooth is the same, this smooth um, graph that we are seeing is the same smooth graph that you see in here right so in this case we are not plotting the histogram we are only plotting the there's the smooth curve which is the kde right just like over here we took the kde off and we plotted only the histogram so over here too we can actually take off the histogram and plot only the kde okay so i'm using the kde plot right i'm using the kde plot here to actually do that Okay, then I'm passing in the data. So uh, the data is the same thing, which is the defense column, right? I'm using the plt.show to actually show my output, okay? Now, let's see what we can actually do over here. Now, you see that in this case, we have, we have this as plain one here. We can actually shade in here, right? We can actually shade there. You see how this one is? And you see how this is, this, right? You can actually shade it using the shade equals true. Okay, you see shade equals true. We can actually shade um, under under this smooth curve, right? We can shade it. Okay. So all these are there's parameters that you can be be changing over and over again, right? They are all into your own hands, right? Depending on what you want to do, depending on what you want to achieve, you can actually be be um be, be be turning these things off and on you can be changing them as as per your own requirement and as per your own um intuition that you're using to um, extract data okay now i can also use what is called the joint plot to actually plot um the data points side by side so let's see how that actually works right so this is this is nothing but the original data set that we will have okay so that's what i'm actually um seeing the head of it so I'm going to do that, right? So 
in this case we're just using univariate right we just the uh, one data point i mean one column right then we visualize and make inferences out of it now i can do that for for maybe two or three right i can also do that okay so if i use the joint plot right if i use the joint plot here right don't forget i'm still using the seaborne right that's why i'm just doing this with the only a single line of code right that's what i'm doing so i pass in i pass in my data here our data here and uh our data in our data we are selecting the defense right so the defense column is what we are going to actually visualize here and then we are plotting that against the attack column right so we want to see the the relationship that is between this um attack and then the defense okay so if we do that right if we do that we see that we have a positive correlation which is existing among attack i mean between attack and then defense although it's um it's quite weak weak um positive correlated but you can still you can still spot it over there right and if you see here right you see that we have the histogram histogram for defense being plotted here we have the histogram for attack being plotted here okay that's why we refer to it as a joint plot right that's why we refer to this as a joint plot so we help you to join plot these two right so we have of this correlation that is existing among attack and then defense and also we have this i mean alongside the uh, histogram okay so we can also do that now what we can actually do over here is to actually see this um correlation right now we see that the correlation among different um this attack and then defense here is is positive right although it's a little bit weak right so that's what i'm trying to spot here so defense defense and attack right so, so you can do defense and attack or defense and attack don't forget that they are all the same thing here right so it's positive um positive 0.49 right so that's why you see the positive correlation but it's very very low right positive 49 is very very low so that's why you can actually see if i should draw a line over here right if i should just try and then fit a regression line over here right if i should try and fit a regression line over here you can see that some of the points will lie on top of the i mean on the regression line you can see some of them which are very far away from and this regression line right so we can still spot some of the data points which are very far away from this regression line so although we have positive correlation but they are still very okay so um let's let's actually move on and then um use the joint plot right so we're going to use the joint plot and in this case uh, let me show you the output so that you can see what i want to show you over here okay now um what i want to do is that remember that over here i used the joint plot right and i did not provide anything right after, after i used the joint plot i did not provide anything here right now i can specify instead of this this histogram right i can specify to have this right to have the kd right so if i do that right i'm saying that the kind should be a kd that's why now you see a smooth um graph here right you see a smooth graph here and even in the middle you see a smooth graph instead of the scatter plot i'm going to use i'm going to use this joint plot right i'm using a joint plot over here so you can see that um defense is having its distribution as this which is positively skewed all right which is positively skewed and then we have attack here which is um almost almost symmetric um distribution right almost symmetric distribution here okay so we can actually specify the kind of uh, of joint plot that we want okay we can also do that now if we do this right if we do this and then we see that the kind now it's the same thing over here i'm using the same thing right the same code right the only thing that i'm changing here is the kind right i'm i'm saying that the kind should be rec and now what does that mean let's see what we have right so the kind should be regression right should be regression so don't forget to that when we earlier on use the lm plot right when we use the lm plot let me go a little bit um up right when we use the lm plot this is what we have right this is what we have so the same thing that we are going to actually show over here that the kind should be a regression right so if i go a little bit down okay so that's what is actually being um, shown here that the kind should be regression so it's going to fit the same regression line for us 
and this one is attack and then defense that the relationship among them and then the defense you can see that the defense distribution is actually shown up here and then the attack distribution is shown here okay so um let's see how we can actually visualize more than two over here so over here we're just using defense and attack only two right so if you want to visualize more than two then we can we also have a function for that right which is pair plot okay and you're going to be using pair plot over and over again over and over again right you're going to be using it over and over again so um what I want to do is because most of in when you have your data, you actually want to see everything at a go, right? You want to see everything at a go. So in that case, the pair plot is going to be, I mean, it's going to come in handy. It's going to actually help a lot. Okay, so take note of this. Now, in our data, we're going to select some columns to, to actually plot, right? So over here, you can see that we have defense, I have attack, and then we have HP, right? So if we do this, remember this is more than two, right? It's three, if it is two, maybe we could have used um, the joint plot to actually do that, okay? And then uh, over here, I'm specifying that this kind should be a scatter plot, okay? And I'm using my plt.show to actually show that. Now, if I do that, you see that we have this, right? We have a scatter plot. So this is a scatter plot for all of them. So we have defense attack hp right for all of the data points or the columns that we specified over here okay so we have all of them over here now you can see the the, the correlation that is assisting among the various data points being displayed over here right and then the um the, di the diagonals are having the histograms okay you can you can change these diagonals as you want right you can change them as as you wish okay so um, over here, right, so let me show you this. Okay, now, as I told you, this, auto, I mean, um, by default, it's actually going to show you this, right, histogram as, as, as the diagonals. If you want to change this histograms at the diagonals, what you can add to the same code is this dike underscore kind, which is actually showing you KDE. right, which in this case, we are choosing KDE. right, by default, it's actually going to be histogram. Okay, but in this case we are choosing KDE. Okay, that's why you have in the middle a smooth um, curve, right? Uh, unlike this one that we have in this, that, and then that. But this one we have the smooth one, right? So we did that just using the dike underscore KDE. Okay, the rest as the data points that I've sent. Um, I mean we have seen over and over again. Okay. Okay, so now let's see how we can actually visualize categorical data um sets or uh, i mean or data points okay so over here um it's, we have although we have some legendary here as categorical but um i'm going to load a different data set that we can actually work on with that okay so i'm going to load the automobile data sets okay so um if we see the head of it right if we see the head of it you can see that we have symbol normalized losses make um for type right and then um aspiration I mean a lot of a lot of categorical columns that we have over here okay okay so um if if we do this right if we do this for instance if we take um the number of doors right we have some cars that are having two doors some cars that are having four doors and so for instance this is a categorical column right there are some cars that use gas there are some site that use um diesel okay there are some cars that use ca gas there are some cars that use diesel okay so this is also a categorical column right like like other columns that we have in there so what i'm going to do is to actually use this um strip plot right, let me show you the output so you can actually see okay i'm going to use the strip plot to on, on a number of doors and then horsepower okay so the number of doors right is either two or four doors okay it's a categorical column and then the horsepower right um let me spot this horsepower okay this one okay this is the horsepower so i'm going to actually see the horsepower being here for us right and then um since since our number of doors is categorical you see that we have those that are having two doors and then the cars that are having um four doors so we can see that cars that are having two doors are actually having higher horsepower right they're having has higher horsepower as against cars that are having four doors right which are having um a bit lower horsepower right they're having a bit lower horsepower 
as as compared to cars that are having two doors, right, which are having higher horsepower. Okay, so this this visualization of a categorical column can actually give you an idea of um the distribution of of your of 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 the various categories that you have. Okay, so if for instance um cars right cars um with two doors where well, say in total say um thirty thousand right maybe our data set is too huge it's so it's very huge right so we have cars that are having two doors to be say thirty thousand and then we have cars with four doors right to be say um to be say thousand right maybe thousand two hundred right then we can see that this is a data imbalance, right? And if you visualize this, you would have been seen, although this one is going, but you would have been seen this one as as, as high as as, if, as as you compare to this, right? Right. And you have to actually deal with this situation because if you build algorithm on this, then your algorithm will end up predicting only this, right? And ignoring that. Okay, so we need to actually deal with that. So we're going to learn how to do that. So we don't need to actually worry about that right now. We're going to be learning how to do that in our subsequent videos. Okay, what I want to show you over here is that it's possible to also plot the categorical variables and then visualize them and have an idea of um, what you ought to actually um, dealing with in your, in your data set. Okay, now we can also see do the same thing for a number of those and then horsepower. Okay, over here I'm using box plot. Okay, so we can do the same thing, right? Over here I use stripped plot, but I'm now going to use I'm going to use um, box plot, right? And I'm using this from the Seaborn library, right? Which is containing this box plot, and then inside the box plot I'm specifying the two columns that I want, right? Which is number of doors and then horsepower, right? So if I do that, right? If I do that, I see the box plot that we have, right? So this one is, is actually the same thing as we have over here, right? As we have over there. Now you can see the the minimum and then the maximum of um of cars with two two uh, two doors being higher and then the cars with four doors being lower. Okay. So you can actually see um use the box plot to actually confirm whatever that you use the strip plot to actually do. Okay. Now um we can also do a bar plot, right? You can also use do what is called a bar plot, okay? So I've done, I, I did it with box plot, I did it with strip plot. Now we can also do what is called a bar plot, okay? We can also do the bar plot, which is this, right? So cars with two, two um two doors, right? Cars with two doors are higher, and then as as compared to cars with four doors, okay? Now, what if we want to actually do this, right? What if we want to actually do this on the columns that are having only um, characters and not and not numbers? So if you see this one, right? If you see this one, right? If you see um, the one that we are plotting over here, which is full type, right? If you see the full type, let me show you. Uh, yeah, full type is here, right? So full type, you see that gas or diesel, right? So if we want to actually do that, right? If we want to actually visualize that, then we can use the count plot to accomplish that. Okay, so I have some link here which you can actually take advantage of. And if you want to read more about what you have discussed, you can actually use this link. Okay, and um, basically whatever you need as 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 the as the as the basics of um of of visualization is what we have discussed over here, right? And moving on, we are actually going to go into details with this right we are actually going to go into details with every every lesson that you have we have discussed here right you're going to meet them over and over again okay so if you see this project that um that you actually be working on this project as well okay so if you see over here that's you see the visualizations that i was talking about okay so they are they are actually there right the let me actually show you this Okay, so over here you can see that I'm doing some visualizations, right? This is a univariate data analysis that I was doing, okay? And then spotting some outliers is in the box plot over here. Now you can see the heat map that I told you, right? That I am using it here, right, for my for my project, okay? 
I'm using it over here. So whatever concept that we have learned so far is actually applicable in one way or the other. Okay. So um, that's it. That's pretty much it, right? So uh, see you in the next in the next uh, lesson. Have a nice day.